Hello, I'm Doug Breen, Chief Agronomist for Gulf North Properties, and today we're going to talk about aeration. It's happened to all of us. You go to the golf course, you're ready to play, and you realize, ah, the greens have been aerated. And you hear people talking about it, but you're not really sure what it means. You just know it means the greens are going to be bumpy for a while. Well, today I'm going to explain to you what aeration is, why we do it, and why it's good for the golf course. I want to start by talking about how greens are built because that's really important. There's basically two kinds of greens in the world. There's soil greens, which are just pushed up. We call them push up greens, which are basically the native local soil and the grass grows on top of those. All greens built in the early 1900s and before, that's how they were all built. The way we build them now though, is we call them sand greens. There's a couple different designs, but basically what it is, is you're growing the plant in straight sand. There's a little bit of organic material that builds up over time, but in reality, you're growing the green on straight sand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this soil probe right here. I'm going to poke some holes in this green here at Conestoga and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this green was built, oh, in the early 80s or so. If I take a probe in and pull out the core, you can see. Yeah. So the reason we have to aerate greens is that over time, all of the soil and sand, it gets compacted. It happens more with soil than it does with sand, but either way it gets compacted. Think about when you were a kid and there was always in front of the soccer goal mouth, there was no grass growing. It wasn't so much the friction of people running around on it, it was the fact that it got so compacted from people jumping up and down on it, running around, all the foot traffic. In a park, you'll see it under wherever areas where people walk. It's the compaction that ultimately does it. So what we're doing with aeration is we're trying to eliminate that compaction. The second thing we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate thatch. And I'm going to talk about thatch now. This plug here that I've pulled out, you can see a little bit of thatch up here at the top. This is what we call the thatch. This layer right here is basically dead organic material. So it's dead leaves of grass. What happens is if this thatch gets too thick, this isn't too, too bad actually. This green's been pretty well taken care of. Lots of top dressing, lots of aerating. But if that gets too thick, what happens is the water can't get through it. It's just like a thatched roof on a house. The rain comes and the thatch, the water can't get through and the roots will dry out. Even though you're dumping tons and tons of water on top of the green, it just puddles and it won't go down inside. So we have to eliminate this thatch layer. This is again, not too, too bad, but I've looked at greens where that thatch layer was two or even three inches thick. And if it gets that thick, the green's in serious, serious trouble. So this is a really extreme example of compaction. What's happened here, this obviously isn't a golf green, this is an area in the rough. But what's happening here is all the carts run through here all day, every day, every day. And this area here is really, really compacted. So it's really hard to even get this in, even though it's been raining and it's fairly moist. But look how that, it's all compacted and it holds together. This is rock hard. So what happens is the golf green underneath the surface can get every bit as hard and compacted as this. So there's two reasons why we aerate. The number one reason is to reduce that compaction that we talked about. If it's too compacted, the grass will not survive. The roots won't go down very far. As soon as you get any kind of drought stress at all, the grass will go south. We really need to have a nice open environment. In the, in the wild, what happens is we have worms. Worms go down in and they do the aeration of the soil normally. And then water goes down and freezes and thaws and you get, that's how we do aeration everywhere else in the world. But golf greens are a very specific environment and the compaction is a lot higher. If you imagine Imagine we've got 300 golfers in a day, each of them have two feet, and think about how many footsteps happen on a green every single day. It's not surprising that we get a lot of compaction. And you take somebody my size, you put all the weight on the ball of my foot, that's a lot of pounds per square inch of compaction on the soil. And then you take 200 more of me, and we walk across that green, and you get serious, serious compaction. So we have to take some extra care to make sure that we're aerating our greens to make sure that we've got airflow, that the oxygen can get down, and the water can get down to the roots as well. The second reason that we aerate is to get rid of that thatch. When we were over on the putting green there, I pulled out that piece of thatch and I showed it to you. If that thatch gets too thick, no matter what you do, the water won't go down. It just acts like the thatch roof on a, on a house and the water can't get through. So no matter how much you irrigate in the middle of the summer, the, the green is gonna go south on you. So it's all about making sure we've got good golf to play and good greens to play on later on in the year. So it's preventative maintenance is what it is. It's like changing the oil in your car. It's like taking care of your body. You have to do preventative maintenance on the golf green so that when you want to play on it, it's in good shape. When we get a lot of feet on it, it's in good shape. When we get a lot of moisture stress or, or drought stress or heat stress, that the green's always in good shape. I know that when we're aerating greens, it is an inconvenience to the golfers. There's no question. And there's a bunch of different things that superintendents do to try and make it as 
least of an inconvenience as possible, but it still is an inconvenience. But here's why it's important. If we don't do it, the long-term health of the greens will suffer. So we have to do it. The good news is we've gotten pretty good at top dressing. We've got pretty good at cleaning up. We've got pretty good at rolling greens. That putting green that we were just on was aerated about two weeks ago and you could hardly tell at all that it had been done. But if you actually went down inside the green, you'd see all kinds of healthy roots, all kinds of air exchange, all kinds of water getting down to the roots. So it's really important that we do it. The important thing to remember too is, don't forget that when greens are being aerated, it's a ground under repair. So maximum two putts is all that you can get on your scorecard. That's a USGA, RCGA, Gulf Canada, it's been a rule at the Royal and Ancient forever. When a green is being aerated, it's only maximum two putts. A lot of guys actually get better scores than they normally do. Yesterday at Exeter, they aerated the greens and there was two hole in ones on the day when they were aerating greens on the same green. So it just shows that it really doesn't affect your game that much. It's a bit of an inconvenience, but it's really important and that's why we do it.